So Claudio is asking, hello, maybe it's an easier, silly question, but I'd like to know practically how we compare TD project, you know, maybe with Dropbox or similar. So a few people can collaborate in the same project at the same time, and eventually each one is maybe responsible for one part, whether it's textures, 3D models, calibration, et cetera. Thanks in advance. So there's a couple of interesting parts of this question. Uh, a couple of them are kind of high level, and I can talk about them. And a couple of them are actually really practical and shows off a tool that we have that I made to really make my life easier when dealing with um, these kind of shared projects. Because the big thing is that to move to a collaborative workflow in Touch Designer, you have to move to a workflow of using Tox files, the TOX files. So let me share my screen, and I can even show you just a quick example of how I would put something like this together. So let's see here. Well, I've got everyone's favorite application open, Touch Designer. And what I'm going to do is actually make sure my chat is up. So feel free to ask questions at any time if you have any. I don't know where my chat went. And let me just make a new folder. Because the first step is always it's better to think ahead than to think behind. Because if you think behind, you're, you're probably going to get into some real trouble. So first thing I always do with project is make a little folder. I'll just call this project. I'm going to go inside. I'm going to take my blank project, save it in there. So if you haven't seen our project architecture training video yet, I highly recommend watching that because a lot of what, we'll talk, what we're going to talk about, I go into more depth in that video, except for the part that comes at the end of it, which is talking about collaboration. So the big approaches for collaborating are that we have to split the project into Tox files because unfortunately, the touch designer project file is a binary file which means when services like Dropbox look at it, when Git looks at it, um, any of the other version control systems look at it, they really can't tell the difference between two files. They just see, okay, well, this one's was timestamped at this time and is this size, and this one's timestamped at this time and is this size, and they can't really do anything about it. And that's the big problem with touch because if two people are working on the project and you both hit save really quickly, then Dropbox freaks out, Git freaks out, everybody freaks out. So unfortunately, the only way we can deal with this in Touch Designer is to split out the one project file that is a big binary file into lots of smaller binary files and then delegate who's going to be working in which one. So if we're talking about an example where, you know, Claudia was mentioning there was some texture, some 3D models, some calibration. What's interesting is there's a couple of ways you can approach this workflow. And the only way it works is if you really think about your team, your process, how you're going to work on these projects. Because for example, there's a couple of different ways we could structure this, right? So like, for example, if I make a container and I call this textures, and then I make another container and I call this models, and I make another container and call this calibration, and we'll talk about how to turn these into external tox files in a moment, but the structure is really important first. So if I do it like this, this may be enough. You know, if your team has one, two, maybe even three people, you know, this can support three people working at the same time on different things. Now, if your team has more people than that, or maybe your team is more split in terms of workflow, because Let's say, for example, we have textures, models, and calibration, but we actually have five different modes inside of our show. So there's textures for all five modes. There's different models for each of the modes. Maybe there's a different calibration that happens for each five mode. So what we could do is then say, okay, well, you know what? We have five modes, so let me go inside of textures. Inside of textures is going to be you know, text mode one. That's going to be one container. We copy and paste that a few times. Then all of these become external tox files. So for example, if I was working on the textures for mode one, I could go in there. If you know Stephen was working on texture for mode two, he could go in there. If Mary's working on three, she could go into three. And we could all work collaboratively on these by only saving the things we're working on. Now, that might work for, for your team. Another approach, though, which could be completely different is let's say myself, Steve, and Mary 
are working on this project, but we're not all working on the same pieces. I am in charge of mode one, Steve's in charge of mode two, and Mary's in charge of mode three. Then this structure is counterproductive because now every time Mary, every time I'm working on mode one, I actually have to go into text mode one, do some stuff. Then I got to go into models. And, you know, maybe I, I have a container in here for models mode one through five. You know, then I got to go in there and then I'm going to go to calibration and there's going to be five in there. So all of a sudden, me as the developer, even though I'm only in charge of mode one and I'll never touch mode two or three or four or five, I'm kind of already split through multiple parts of the project, which is kind of suboptimal in terms of just general workflow. So if that was the case, then maybe actually the, the proper way to, to kind of compartmentalize this was to actually just full on make a different container for each mode. You know, so at the top level of our project, we have mode one, two, three, four, five. You go into each one. Each one has its respective, you know, textures. It's got its respective models loaded in, and then it's got its own respective calibration data. And then your team can decide, you know what, like, is it enough if each one of these is a tox file? That would give us five tox files. Maybe that's enough for all of us to work collaboratively on the same project. Maybe you actually want to go inside and still anyways make these different tox files. But I think that would defeat the point of this, because this point is to make it simpler for the workflow. Because tox file management is not easy. It's kind of a pain in the ass. So the easier we can make it, the less amount of tox files we can make for ourselves, that's really going to benefit your efficiency in the long term. So let's say we're actually going to go ahead with the first mode. You know, We're going to go ahead with this split of textures, models, and calibration. So how do we actually approach this on a practical sense in terms of making you know, tox files? So there's the manual way of doing it and the automatic way. And if I just show you the manual way really quickly, let's say I want to make you know, text mode one an external tox file. The first thing I have to do, if you're not familiar with tox files, is right click on this, save component.tox. Then what I always do is inside of my project folder, and actually I'll just do this in the finder because it's a little bit easier. Uh, I make a new folder called TOX. And this holds all of my tox files just somewhere neatly so they don't make the project folder look all messy. So I'll right click, save component tox, go into my TOX folder, and I'll just leave this named as it is. And then now I have inside that tox file a tox, but it's not linked to anything yet. And this is the important step where you have to come to the tox to the component that you have, go to the common page, come down to external talks, and actually point this back to the file you just saved. So I'll go ahead and do that and say this is text mode one. Usually what you can do is leave all of these on as a default. If there's some specific settings you need, then you, know, you can read about what each one of these do. But the default is, is pretty fine. And then what you do is you just hit reinit network to make sure it is now kind of done the linking process. And if you go inside, what you'll see in the top left corner is it says external talks. So now we know we're inside of this talks file. So that's the manual way of doing it. Kind of sucks. It's a little bit of a process. And if you have to do that 10 or 20 times, you're just like, oh, God, this is the worst day of my life. So what we did uh, for Envoy and for all of our projects, and uh, which is now a tool inside of our HQ group tools. Uh, let me open my palette because that's where I have mine. We have this nice tool called Tox Tools. And really what it is, is it's just shortcuts and status checking. So if I just drag and drop this on the root of my project, the first thing I want to do is just go to the Tox folder. And then I want to point it at my Tox folder. So I'm going to hit Select Folder. And then what I can do is kick view external toxes. And you got this little UI window that tells you, OK, well, this is a tox file you have. Here's the path in the project. Here's the last time it was saved. And unsaved, true or false. I find this to be super useful for us because sometimes you go and change something in a tox file and you forget to save it. And this will tell you immediately. So if I was to close this window, you know, go into this text mode one and put another container, now I've changed something in this and I haven't saved yet. So if I go back to the talks tools and hit view external, it says unsaved true. 
Now, if that's all it did, I'd be like, okay, cool, that's that's kind of useful. But what it also does is give you hotkeys for a lot of stuff. So right now the defaults are control plus alt plus one, two, three. So control alt plus three basically brings up this little menu. Control alt two will automate the whole process that I just did for you. So for example, if I was to go into text mode two and I wanna make this an external tox file now, I can just go into the network, hit control alt two, it brings up a prompt asking me if I wanna save it as an external tox file, I hit yes. It asks me, do I want to create an external new talk? So I hit yes. It boots me out because that's re-initting itself. And now if I go in here, you'll see everything is already set up. We have the external talks. If I go look inside of my folder, I've got external talks text mode two. So that makes it really easy to just quickly like bang through all of these control alt two, yes, yes. You know, control alt two, yes, yes. And very quickly, you now have everything saved as an external tox file. Everything is going to be linked up in the parameters correctly. So that's like super useful for me. Even more useful is the fact that once you start using tox files, one of the really critical elements of this workflow is that you only have to save the main project once. So once you've done doing all this linking, setting up the external tox parameters, making sure these are external toxes. I just go back to the root of the project. I hit control S, web save this to project.1. And now I basically never need to save this project again, except if I make a big structural change. So maybe if I add a new tox for text mode six, maybe if I went into models and just you know moved these to somewhere else, then I would need to save the overall project. But from here on out, it's only a matter of saving the individual toxes that are being changed. So the manual way you do that is annoyingly the exact same way we made them. So, you know, for example, if I'm working in container and I add a bunch of stuff here and I want to save this, I'd go up a level, right click on text mode one, save component, you know, this whole million click process. That's shenanigans. That needs to go away immediately. So inside of our talks tools, we also made a shortcut that automatically detects the nearest parent that's an external tox and saves it for you. So for example, if I was inside of text mode two, and here I am happily working away, doing really cool art stuff. If I hit control alt one, it pops up a menu. Are you sure you want to overwrite? I hit yes. That's it. It's saved. We can check the timestamp, check the tapes, people, 5.32 PM. So that way it's so much easier, you know, you can, add, it's, it's as close as I've been able to get to the natural process of hitting control S is now I just hit control alt one and hit yes. I, we put the dialogue in there just because sometimes if you hit the thing accidentally, like maybe you didn't mean to save, or maybe you're in the wrong, you know, external talks area. So you can see it's pretty smart, like whatever talks file you're inside of control alt one, it finds the one you're inside of hits yes, you know, even if we go down a few levels into it, it does a smart search back upwards through the network looking for the first available external talks and asks you, is that the one that you meant to save? And you hit yes and you keep going. So those hotkeys from talks tools should make your life a lot easier in that regard. Now, if we're coming back to the actual overall process, once you have talks file split up. The big thing is the diligence and commitment to the process because it's very easy to just ignore the talks file that you're supposed to be inside of. And you just start going to all these other talks files and, and just making crazy changes and saving them. And then you're back at square one because if somebody else, you know, if I'm working in talks file and you're working in the same talks file and we both save it, we're still at the same issue. The only thing that gets prevented is by having multiple talks files we can essentially isolate our work inside of the different tox files. So I'm only going to work in tox one today. You're only going to work in tox two today. Steve's only going to work in tox four today. And then you, you kind of have to do a little bit of coordination between your team to say, okay, well, I'm here. Please, no one go in here. So-and-so is in here. So-and-so is in here. Kind of requires a little bit of project management almost in that sense. But it's not like heavy project management. It's just kind of a couple messages like, hey, I'm in this talks today and you're in this talks. And 
that's kind of the, the brute force of it. Uh, I still highly recommend checking out the project architecture training video because it'll help you figure out where you want to compartmentalize, how deep to go, how to set up custom parameters. Because the last thing you want is for you to be working in a talks file and you're doing a lot of changes and you know whether there's a bunch of scripts in there that are related to some other process and then someone needs that other process to change. So all of a sudden now you're changing scripts for the other person or they're trying to reach in and change your scripts. The best way to do it is to go with custom parameters, isolate, compartmentalize, really black box every individual talks so that if you're working on a feature, you never have to leave that talks to work on the feature. You never have to reach into another container to edit anything. You really want to keep stuff compartmentalized. And then once you do it, whether you want to use Dropbox, Git, I don't know, Tortoise, any of the other types of version control, Google Drive, all of them basically will work about the same. I have a slight preference for Dropbox and Git, because if I have to do Git workflow, I find the you know, private GitHub repo seems to be the easiest to use, has good clients for it that are you know, graphic clients, because I don't really want to get into like command lining my Git. That's, I didn't get in this business to command line Git people. Um, and then Dropbox, because I find the, the syncing is the most reliable. I don't care what anybody says. Dropbox is not a feature. Dropbox is the best syncing application. Handles large files, small files, accidental deletions, uh, the rollbacks. Conflicts are handled even pretty nicely. Uh, their customer support is pretty good. Their ability to sync locally between different machines is amazing. I've never had Dropbox really fail on me in like the 10 years I've been dealing with it. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.